So I was born on the same birthday year as Hello Kitty was born. And um, I was also born on the same birthday as Kate Moss. So I am that special. <laughs> and I was born uh, during the bubble time uh, of Japan. And I was a teenager um, that we could all shop at Chanel, Dior, Louis Vuitton, you name it, the major brands. And it was just every day head to toe to um, clothing that you wear. And you go out and spend thousands of dollars in one night. And that was just common sense of, um, of this period of time in Japan. And people started appreciating domestic creations during this time as well. And there were Yoji Yamamoto, Isemiyake, Homme Garçon, who were totally uh, revolutional and controversial for the society and new style and something that was so new from Japan that went to the world as fashion. During this time, I was highly inspired by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And, um, for me, Jean-Paul Gaultier was the combination of East and the West of fashion. And at this time, I went to high school in Massachusetts in New England, a super preppy um, boarding school. Um, from Tokyo, and this is how I landed head to toe in Jean Paul Gaultier kids' line. And then I went to university in Paris, and then went to uh, Central Saint Martins in London. Then I graduated from Parsons School of Design, New York. At this time, I knew that I really wanted to work in fashion. And then uh, for the next two decades, I worked for a major house uh, of fashion worldwide, um, from underground to auto couture in uh, Paris, London, New York, uh, Tokyo. And I really enjoy um, the beauty of fashion. And uh, at the same time, I lived in Harlem so that I could afford to pay my rent, and I could shop at sample sales to dress myself head to toe in Chanel. That's the reality of fashion. Now, you have your passion, and you start from scratch, and you work so hard, focus 24 seven, and someday you get somewhere where you dreamt of. And then this is a painting by Sally Sasaki in Paris, an artist um, who painted my life of 20 years at that time. Very happy, multicultural, uh, very um, colorful. And then after that, something hit me really hard. I was working as usual in Paris showroom and I received a phone call from my cousin, which was very unusual. Life is full of surprises, and you never know what's going to happen today or tomorrow or the next minute. My mother was found dead, and it was right before Christmas and right before my 30th birthday. And it was four months after I moved back to Tokyo to be with her after 15 years away from home. During this time, during this time, I let myself to think, and from the crisis that I received, I went minus one, minus two, minus three, and fell into a hole, and let myself welcome all these negative-minded people, surrounded myself with that people, and it actually lasted for five years. And I kept working during this time, but it just got worse and worse. And you, I mean, I was, I got very lost during these five years of darkness. And then something happened that, that something told me that I should really snap out of it. It's been five years that I've been depressed and. I was feeling lost and I couldn't sleep. So I decided to snap out of it. And at the same time, I got very lucky that I got an offer 
from a very um, global company. And it was a brand that my mother loved for many, many years. So I thought it was meant to be that this is a turning point of my life, that I should take this offer and I should start my life from scratch and be very positive and happy. So I took the offer and I moved back to Tokyo again from where I was at the time, which was in the USA, and I moved here. Then suddenly I faced a sexual discrimi discrimination and sexual harassment. Problems or crisis or shock comes to you at any moment of your life. And it, it seems so much easier if you just close your eyes and ignore it. But in fact, if you leave your problem and if you don't face it today, the problem might come back to you someday. And you will live your life, the rest of your life, worrying that it might come back to you someday or to someone that you really care. So I decided to take a stand. And I took a stand as one person out of 1,500 employees where everyone was against me. Oh, you're so crazy. You're individual against the company. So it was ignored first. In return, I got fired. I was demoted, transferred, accused for, of um, unexcused absences. I got um, warning letters, and then in the end, I got fired at criminal level. And then one day, one person wanted to write about the story. This is a serious problem. This is a problem that represents the society now. So one article came out from Japan Times. When I spoke up first, I was the only person out of the company. And when I spoke and spoke, spoke about the problem, thinking it was for the society, finally someone launched a story. And in one night, 1,500 articles were written overnight worldwide. And then uh, in one week, 55,000 articles were written worldwide. So one voice was ignored and then rejected. But then one person felt, OK, I would like to voice with you because there's something wrong. That's not the society we want to live in. Then that one voice became 1,500 articles overnight and 55,000 articles in one week. My 20 years of experience became a completely different image and icon overnight. And because I spoke out, I was attacked by the company. Um, so the second crisis hit me. And I let myself um, welcome negative people, negative comments. When there are some people talking about positive things, I would try to look at negative things. And somehow I fell into a dark hole again. And this time, more problems came to me because I was attracting all the negative power. It's not really a power, but I just call it power because 
it's so strong once it starts coming to you. Now, this was second crisis I faced in my life. So I believed in, okay, power of positive. When I try to think positive, I'm sure there is a way. And then I turned the shock and crisis, set myself at zero, and then took that zero as a chance and tried to create something out of it. When I woke up one day, the United Nations came to support my case. The United Nations thought my case was a high profile case of discrimination and harassment worldwide, not only in Japan. Later on, Hong Kong Parliament wanted to review my case because they thought it was a representation of what they shouldn't approve for Hong Kong stock market, which was the window to the Chinese market, which is the biggest economy in the world. So they called a lawmaker and they wanted to review how to prove the compliance issue to approve for IPO in Hong Kong. Now I have an appointment this month with Parliament of Japan, with Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Education, Science, Sports, and Cabinet Office to talk about my case as an example of social issue that shouldn't be repeated. Now, I also created from my crisis a school for children. From my experience, everything I experienced, it came back to education. When you're educated in the right direction, you have positive thinking. So I created a school for the first time in the world, linked to the world at early age. The children come to school with their passport and study about different cultures. So if they're exposed to new cultures from early age, they know the beauty of each other, that there is no discrimination in this world. And I also made sure the school didn't look like a school, so they have fun to study and learn. And this is my life today, that children are learning about the real world from age one, and they know how to speak out for their own problems, and I hope they will never change when they grow up. It's really all about changing your crisis, set yourself to zero, and look at it as chance of your life, and create something new out of your crisis. And this is my philosophy of power of positive. And I thank you everyone for listening, my simple story of my life. Thank you.